Okay, so the question that we're trying to ask here, right, this is a, it can be a very good interview question. So we want you to ask the user to uh, how many rows he wants, right? So he's going to decide, the user going to input the number of the rows and the user going to input the number of the columns that he wants to create the array. Then according to the numbers that he gives, we're going to create the array, right? A uh, uh, array of strings. So there are going to be names there. Let's say if he says, I want three columns or three rows, and then in each row, I want four columns. So there'll be 20, 12 names, right? And then we're going to fill the array one by one or get, get a number, put in the array in some specific position one by one. And then at the end, when we're done with filling the array, we're going to print the array, okay? So let me start with the first step. We're going to ask the user, how many rows do you want in the array, okay? So let me just do it. So first of all, if we want the user to enter the, right, to enter the number of the rows and the number of the columns, of course, we need the scanner, right? So in Java, we use scanner, scanner. And then of course, we give any name to the variable, scan or anything that we want, new scanner. <clears throat> and then here we use system.in, right? So by using system.in, what are we doing here? We are reading, right? We are going to be able to read from the uh, to read from the user. So this class here has a red line be be below, which means that you need to import the class. So two different ways. One, we click here and we import the class. This is one way. Or Command Shift O or Control Shift O will import the class. Okay. So let me do it manually here. So hover the mouse here and then import the scanner class. So now by using this scanner here or input or whatever I want to call this one, right? Whatever I want to call this one, I will be able to read the numbers. So the first thing, right? We want to print a meaningful message to the, to the user. Uh, the, the message is, let me just print it here. How many rows do you want in the array? So whatever the number, right? Whenever the number he gives to us or she gives to us, we're going to read it and we're going to store it into a variable, right? So let me just say here, and rows is equal to, so we use this variable to read from the user and then input, right? Input dot next int. So this will read the integer from the console and it will, right, store it to this variable here. So the same thing for the columns. Let me copy paste from here. And the only thing we're changing is how many columns right? Columns do you want in the array? So we read that and we store it into columns, right? Columns variable. So whatever, right? Whatever numbers he gives us, we're going to create the array. Okay. Let us create the array. So when we create the array, we say, we want an array of strings. Okay. It's a two dimensional array. It has rows and it has columns. Okay. Or actually it has arrays of one dimensional array. So two uh, square brackets here. And then here we say, you know what? I'm going to call these names because I'm going to store some names there. And then new string. And then here, we're when we're creating, right? When we're creating the array of strings, we have to decide the size. I want three columns and two, uh, three rows and two columns. So the first one is the rows. The second one is the columns, okay? So what are we going to do here? We're not going to put these hard-coded values here. Whatever he gives us as a value, we're going to use it here. So whatever rows he wants, that's many. how many rows our array will have. How many columns the user wants, that's how many columns our array will have, okay? So let us debug our code to understand to see if we are able to, if we're able to do it, okay? Let us debug our code. So how many rows do you want in the array, right? We're giving here a meaningful message. I want three rows. Okay, very good. Let me read it. So what it does here, it reads the number three and it's stored into this variable here. How many columns do you want? I want I want uh, four columns. Okay. So now at this moment, right, the rows has the value three and the columns has the value four. So when we create the array after I execute this step, which is uh, line 22 here, there will be a two dimension array with three rows and four columns, okay? So let me just execute this step and let me hover the mouse. When I hover the mouse, I see that I have a lot of nulls here. So the default values for the strings is null. If it was an array of integers, it will be zeros. If it's an array of uh, doubles, it will be 0 0.0s. 
And if it's an array of booleans, that will be false. So the default for booleans is false. So the default for string is null. Why? Because nulls are, right? Because uh, string, the default value for string is null. Why? Because string is a class and these are the objects. We're going to talk about the, uh, the strings and the objects in the upcoming classes. So this is, right, a two-dimension array. The first element is an array of strings, right? An array of strings. There are four of them, four columns. The second one is also, it has also four columns. The third one also have four columns, right? So we have three arrays. The first one is the rows. And in each of them, there are four columns each, okay? So yes, I am able to create an array and to put all default values now there. So now the, the next step is I need to fill the array. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the first row, first element, and put some value. Second element, put some value. Third element, put some value. Fourth element, put some value. Then I'm done with the first row. Go to the next row. Read some value. Put it into that specific element, OK? That's why I will need to iterate, right? The same examples that we did in previous, right, in the class. The same examples. We need to iterate the two-dimension array. Iterate each row, and each row, it has four elements in the other row, four elements in the other row, four elements. So that's why I'm going to say here, for int i. So you can use any variable here, right? Here, we're filling the array. Let me just copy this one here, create the array. OK, and then the next step is filling the array, OK? Filling the array here. So what are we doing here? We're filling the array. Let me just remove it from here. And the next one, what are we going to do? We're going to print the array after we're done with filling the array. So now we need to iterate the rows. How many rows there are? Whatever the number is here, right? We're going to read it from the user. So for int starting from 0, int i is less than the number of the rows. So if the rows is 4, we go 0, 1, 2, 3. We're developers. The developers start counting from 0 until less than the number. So if I have four kids, my kids have four index, right? The index is 0, 1, 2, 3. So when I call my kid with index 3, is actually my last kid, OK? So i++. plus plus. So I am iterating the rows. It will go from 0 to less than the rows. Then I, for each row, I'm going to go to one of the rows and I'm going to iterate the columns. So for int j starting from 0, j is less than. So now I'm not going to iterate the rows. I'm going to iterate the columns. That's why here I say the maximum is whatever I gave here as the maximum number of columns. And then again, of course, not i here, but j. And then here, j++. plus plus. OK, we're going to debug the code. We're going to understand it better, but that is how we do it. So now for every row and every column, for every element, right? we're telling the user, give me a name. I'm going to put it there. Go there to the next one. Give me a name. I'm going to put it there. To the next one. Give me the name. I'm going to put it there. Then I'm done with one row. I go to the next row. Give me a name. Put there. Give me a name. Put there. Right. So here we're going to give a meaningful time, a meaningful message every time to the user. We say, of course, we as Neotech Academy, we are very polite. We don't say enter name. We say, please enter a name. OK, we're very uh, polite. If you're not polite, guys, you know that you go to jail because there's a uh, there is a uh, police department for developers. If they're not nice, you go to that specific jail. Please enter a name, right? We're going to get the names as strings, and then we're going to store it into that specific, uh, that specific position. So if I am at a specific row, and if I'm at a specific column, so I'm going to say here, names, i is the row, j is the column. So when it is 0, 0, it puts its specific position. If it's 2, 1, it puts its specific position, right? Wherever we want it. So we're going to read the name from the user by using, again, I'm going to use the input here, input dot. And when I want to read numbers, I say next int. When I want to read the names or actually strings, I say just next, OK, or next line, whatever you want. So give me a name. I'm going to store it somewhere. Then I move to the next position. Give me a name. I'm going to store it there. So that is actually our code is done. You don't believe it, guys, but we're done with our code, OK? Then, right, let us, let us debug it, right? Let us debug it. And let's see that we're able to get some names and put it to the specific positions. So let us 
So how many rows do you want? Let me put small numbers so that we have. So I want three rows. In how many columns do you want in each row? I want two columns. So now when I create an array, the rows is three and the columns is two. So let me show it here, guys. Let me hover the mouse. At the beginning, we have one array, two arrays, three arrays. One row, two rows, three rows. The index goes from zero, this index zero, index one, and then index two. Inside each row, we have an array, right? In, or actually every row is an array of strings. At this moment, the default values are null. So let me start with i0 and j0. At the beginning, i0, j0, okay? Now, please enter a name. So now I'm gonna read the names and I'm gonna put it into the array. So at this moment, this one is waiting for me to enter the name. Let me put the first name, James. So when I press the enter here, guys, what this one does, it reads the name and it puts it into zero, zero. Why? Because J, I is zero, J is zero. So let me press enter. And then look at this one here, guys, names. So this is index, right? The array with index zero. Inside that one, there is the element with index zero. So now J will be one. So this is zero, one. The index of this one is zero, one, okay? So now again, Please enter a name every time. Very polite, right? Very polite. Please enter a name, David. So we read the name, right? We read the name here and we put it into the position. I was zero, J was one. Let me hover the mouse. I see that David was put into this position. You see guys, we get one and then put in that position. So now we're done actually, right? We're done with the first array. We're done with the first element of two dimension array. So the first element of a two-dimensional array is actually a one-dimensional array. So now that we're done, we're done with all the columns here because we went zero, one, since it's less than two. When it becomes two, this condition here is broken. That's why we go outside of this for loop. Now, again, now next iteration. Now we are at the next row. So A, I became, it was zero, I became one. Here we come here and we start again J from zero, right? Every time we come here, the J starts from zero and it'll go to less than two. So from zero to one. So at this moment, again, please enter a name. They will be entered to the names with index one, zero. So names with index one, zero. So I'm talking about here. Here, whatever we enter, it will come here. Let me put a name here. So let me continue debugging. We're gonna put here uh, Mike. Let's press enter. Let me see if Mike was entered in that specific position. Yes. So now J will become one, and then we're gonna put the value into the next position here. One, one. We're talking about this element here. That one has the index one, one. This is index zero, this is index one. Inside this one, this index zero, this is index one, okay? So let me read another name, and then please enter a name. Uh, oh, let me put some female names, right? Because my students will kill me. So let me continue with Jennifer. And then we see here in the names, Jennifer was put here into one one. So now let me continue with the name, the, the females. So first we put the males, we're good. Now we continue with females because, <laughs> okay, those are very important. So we leave the most important to the end. So again, we're done with this, right? We're done with this row here. Now we go to the next row, right? Or to the next, to the next array. So again, we go to the next iteration. I will become two, right? Let me hover the mouse. Let me see. I will become two. And again, we come here. Again, J starts from zero. So the index now at this moment, it is two, zero. So in the names, this is with index two, zero, right? It's in the uh, array with index two. Inside there, the element with index zero. So let me put another uh, lady's name here. Uh, Veronica, my other student. And then let me see if it was put in that specific position. Yes. Now the last one, this is index two, one. Okay. Look at this one here. So I is two, J is one. So if I hover the mouse here, this is index two, is this area here. And there inside that one, it is the element with index one. Because this index zero, this index one. So let me just read another name. 
Uh, okay. And now that one was put in the last position. So now we are done with the columns. We're done. And if we were the last row, we were also done with the rows. As you see, guys, we, with this for loop, it doesn't matter how many rows I have. It doesn't matter how many columns I have. I'll be able to fill all of them one by one and put them into a specific position. I'm going to move to the specific position. So let me hover the mouse one more time. I have James and David here. I have Mike and Jennifer here. And I have Veronica and Mehpare here. Okay. So now, right now, let's do the last step. And actually, this is the easiest step for you, right? This is the easiest step. We want to print the array. Again, we can print the array. Let me just put here a line so that we can split between entering the elements and printing the elements. Now, let me print the array. We can iterate, right? How can we print a two-dimensional array? We're going to do the first row. We're going to do the second row. We're going to do the third row, right? So we're going to get the rows one by one and every element inside the row. We can do this one with a normal for loop. I will do this one. I will solve or I will uh, print. I will print using enhanced or advanced or for each loop, okay? So we call this one enhanced or advanced for each loop. So what I'm doing here, I'm gonna say for every, for every row, for every, right? For every one dimensional array, for every row inside the names, okay? So names is a two dimensional array. Where is it? Here I declared names. This one is a two dimensional array. If I have a two dimensional array, Whenever I get one row, actually I'm getting a one dimensional array. That's why this one is not a string here. That's why this one is an array of strings. So from a two dimensional array, which is a, uh, that has multiple rows, we're gonna get one row, which is one array, get it. Second row, which is an array, get it. Third row, which is an array, get it, okay? So that's why here, that's why we have to understand very good. If I say string here, even the compiler will tell me if I if I see here I see a red line. The compiler tells me says you cannot get one row a string. No, in one row you have multiple strings. You have an array of strings. That's why here if I hover the mouse it says type mismatch cannot convert an array of string because one row is an array of string. I cannot convert into a string. So even the compiler tells me that I'm doing something wrong. That's why I have to do this one is an array of string. So one row is a one dimensional array of strings. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get one row, right? I'm gonna get one row and I'm gonna iterate it. So if one row is a one dimensional array of strings, every time for every element, for every name, for every whatever I wanna call it, inside the row. So if the row, if the row is a one dimensional array of strings, every time I get an element from there, I will get there a string, okay? So that's why here, I will get here a string. If I say int, how from, you're gonna, you have an array of strings, you're gonna get one element, it's an integer, doesn't match. The, the compiler tells you, you're converting a string into an integer, doesn't work. So that's why you have to do it a string. So from the row, get one string, okay? Now, I did the structure, the only thing is here, I need to print, right, get one name, Print it, get one name, print it, get one name, print it. I'm done with one row. Get the next row. From that row, get a name, print it. Get a name, print it, get a name, print it, okay? So how do I print it? I use the print ln. And of course, if I want to print them at the same line, I have to remove the ln. Let me print the name with some space after it, okay? So print the name, stay in the same line. Print the name, stay in the same line. When you're done with the row, so this for loop says when you're done with the row, let me just go here. Let me just print a new line. Why is this one? Is because I want to move to the new line. Make sure guys that you print this one here an empty, right? You print an empty thing and go to the next line. Do this one outside of this for loop, but do it inside of this for loop. As always, how do we know I'm inside of the loop? Double click here and it shows that here is where the for loop starts. Here's where it ends. What about this curly bracket? What is the closing one of this one? Is it here? Is it here or is it here? Just double click here and it shows you where is the matching one. So it starts here and it ends here. So I am here, I am inside right here. I am inside the 
for loop. So let us debug it. I am done with, the, with, with my work, but let us debug it and let us see that I'm able to do it. So one more time, how many rows do you want? I want four rows. How many columns do you want in each row? I want two columns in each row. Okay, very good. Let me create the area of names. Four rows, two columns. Look, look at this one here. Let me hover the mouse and I see one row or one array, second row or two arrays, third row or third array, and fourth row or fourth array. So when I say fourth, the index goes zero, index one, index two, index three, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do, I did it this one earlier. Enter a name, put it there. Enter a name, put it there. Let me just let me just do it very fast. Please enter a name. Okay, let me put some names here. Olivia. Okay, and if I check here, Olivia is in the first space. Now the next space. Let me move to the next space. Now the J has changed. Enter another name, Brian, my student, which I love so much. Okay. Next one, let me just check at this moment. I have done the first row, Olivia and Brian. Now I move to the next row. Now I go to the next row. It is with index one. And I start from the first column, enter a name. Uh, what is other names here? Mehmet, and then I read it. I put it there in the right in the names. If I check the names, I see Mehmet here. The next one will be here. Let me put another name. So let me put here Yusuf. Okay, good. Now I move to the next row. So I have four rows until now. One row, two rows. Now I'm at the third row. Enter a name there. Okay, let me put a, na a name. Mari Glenn. So actually, I explained it to him. Mari Glenn means Marx, Engels, Lenin. So it's a communist name, but it's okay. I still love him, even though he his name is a communist name. So let me put another name here. Edison. Not the one who invented the, uh, the light, but Edison, our student. Okay? So let me continue. Now I'm at the last row. Give me a name. Let me give a name here, Damla. Okay, so let me continue. Go, and then the last one, the last one, uh, Jada. She was our student too. And now I'm done with my last column of the last row and I go outside. If I check there, all these, nam all these names have been put into my two-dimensional array. Olivia and Brian, Mehmet and Yusuf, Marik Lennon and Edison, Damla and Jada, okay? So now that I'm done, what I will need to do, I will need to print them. So this one, you have to be careful. From the names, which is a two-dimension array, I'm gonna get the first row. What is the first row? The first row is this one here. It's actually a row, right? We're saying this one multiple times. It's an array of strings. It's not a string. It's an array of strings or it's a row. So I will get Olivia and Brian. If you don't believe me, Hover the mouse here and we see, yes, I was able to get Olivia and Brian. So now that I got Olivia and Brian, I can iterate this one. Whenever I get one element from here, since this one is an area of strings, every time I will get a string. So the first time I'll get Olivia, let me hover the mouse. It is Olivia, let me print it here. And then next one, I get Brian, let me print it. So now I am done with the first row here in my, in my uh, console, right, in my console. I am still here at this position here, right? Now, I am done with my first row. Now I'll move to the new line. Let me execute this one. A new line has been executed. Now I'm at this position here. Now I will get from the names, from the names in the next iteration, in the next rotation, in the next repetition, I will get the next array. So I'll get Mehmet and Yusuf. So I'll get Mehmet and Yusuf and it will be assigned to this row here, which is an array of strings. Let me hover the mouse. And as you can see, Mehmet and Yusuf is there. So when I iterate the two-dimensional array, I will get one row. I'll get a one-dimensional array. From here, I will get one string. You see here, this is a string array. This is a string. So now I get the first one, I print it. I get the second one, I print it. So I'm done with my row here, right? Mehmet and Yusuf. 
Now I'll move to the new row. That's why I need to print, go to the new line. So now in the next row, what did I get from here? From the names, I will get, right, from the names, I will get Mari Glenn and Edison, right? Those two names here, Mari Glenn and Edison. Let me just see here. The first name is Mari Glenn. The second name is Edison. You see, I have printed them here. Again, I move to the new line, and then I get the last one. I get the last row. What do I have in my last row? I have Damla and Jada. She were, they were friends. That's why I put them together. So first I get Damla, and then I get Jada, and then I am done with the last row. When I go to the next iteration, then this enhanced for loop, this beautiful advanced loop, it says, I am done with all the rows. So my job is finished. Now the, the for loop is broken. As you can see, right? As you can see, this one will, broke, will break at the end of all the iterations. So now we're done with these examples. If I move this one here, I created, right? I created an array with four rows and two columns. I put Olivia, Brian in the first row. I put Mehmet and Yusuf in the second row. I put Marek Len and Edison in the third row. And I put Damla and Jada in the last row. So if I get here, right? The index of this one is zero, zero. The index of this one is one, one. The index of this one is two, zero. And the index of this one is three, one. Why? Because index zero, one, two, three. And here index zero, one. That's why the index of Jada is three, one. So I hope that now this one makes sense, guys. See you in the next class. Bye.